Hey, what's up, world? It's Rod D. Only snitching news, but news is what we do. And as I usually say, what's up, my earthlings and life dudes? <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, so we're going to do a little update of the Cardi B versus Tasha K. Um, we'll do that in a minute. I think i start off with that one. I also want to talk about the Tanaka Tsunami, um, a little bit about Antonio Brown, and yeah, let's get into it then, without further ado, <laughs> alright, as I usually start off, I'll be talking about my day, how my day went sometimes, and I have to say, I think I found my sweet spot for making the video, and that'll be in the morning time. And that's what a lot of YouTubers say. They like, uh, you got to find the time that's best for you and then just try to hit it up every day at the same time. So, I mean, I'm also, uh, doing my music too. So that takes a, you know what I'm saying? So I be trying to balance everything. The day job, um, the YouTube videos, the music. It's like, uh, you know, it's a joke sometimes, man. So it be like that, like that. So, you know, I try, I'm trying to get more and more consistent with it, and yeah, so I think I found my sweet spot as far as that, just start off in the morning, and like, uh, get at it, you know what I'm saying, get it popping, you know, you know how they say, early to bed, early to rise, so you gotta go hit that day job in the morning anyway, so, you know, just get up early and get at it. So it's working out for me um, pretty good for the last couple of days. I've been able to get videos in. Where for a while there, I was kind of in a slump because I'm like, oh, I just don't have the time. You know what I'm saying? So now I think I found my time slot. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, man. Yeah, so without um, further ado, let's go ahead and uh, get the show rolling. So, like I said, I was going to do the uh, Cardi B versus Tasha K update. And, man, I just have to say, so far with the case, man, it's like, uh, I said, like, in the last video, I don't see it going too well for um, Tasha K. And, you know, at first, she was trying to do a, uh, uh, do a countersuit where she can get some money out of it. But, um, of course, that got threw out. And... So it's just basically Cardi B suing her, and yeah, it's not looking too good right now. And so far, when her when her husband took the stand, now you know what I'm saying, bro didn't help her out one bit. <laughs> it's, not, it's not looking good. And her husband, uh, you know what I'm saying, her husband supposed to go to bat for her, man. You, you know, you you her husband and you half owner of y'all company, you know what I'm saying, he got a lot to lose in the whole deal too, so he should have really been, I don't know, whatever he had to do, you know what I'm saying, do what he got to do for the team, or take one for the team, oh yeah, you know, you know, think about it, her husband could have took one for the team, I said, hey, you know, I don't think it's my wife's fault, you know, I was telling my wife to do this stuff, and egging her on, I'm the owner of the company, you know what I'm saying, he put himself there. So that he takes he takes one for the team, you know, be the fall guy. He needed he should have really stepped it up. But her husband was like, eh, you know, that's a problem. You know, he probably was thinking, hey, I told her what the hell, I told her to stop that mess, man. That's all. <laughs> that's probably what he's thinking. He's like, man, that ain't going down for her, man. Hell to the now. I told her about this mess, man. And yeah, so. You know, you don't know somebody thinking, and that might just have been his thinking in the whole situation. But that part didn't go go well for her at all, and it's still ongoing. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's going in to the to the second week right now, and yeah, so. Oh, but I was going into the to the second week. Um, you know, it still got I don't want to say a ways to go because 
uh, a week is it really that that long? It's really short, especially if a person sweat bullets. And like, dang, man, I thought this was gonna go a different way for me. And like I said last time, between her, between her husband and her lawyer, I would have thought that they would have really gave her better info and been able to help her out a lot better within the situation and now i'm about to go into um check into one of these these publications and see what they're saying about the trial um like i say it's not over yet you know what i'm saying so it's still ongoing so you can't really say oh well this is the final verdict, uh, this is whatever. Nobody can say that because, I mean, it's still going, man. A lot of times something, something happened and you say, well, this is a done deal. And then at the end of it, for whatever reason, it's totally flipped around. And you're like, yo, what? You know what I'm saying? Maybe it, it could have a surprise isn't like that, man. We don't know. We just have to wait all the way to the end. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, let's see. Um, There's one news publication all hip-hop uh they do some good work let me see what they talking about it says cardi b is preparing for a second week of courtroom action against her nemesis vlogger tasha k and it says that uh cardi b filed her lawsuit against tasha k in 2019 and of course, it was about all those uh, videos she kept making and wouldn't stop doing. And it says the YouTuber alleged Cardi B had been, okay, it talks about, you know, some of the bad stuff she said as far as STDs and all this other, you know, just outrageous. Like, uh, if you ain't got a personal vendetta against the person, like, I mean, I can see if y'all grew up together and y'all had a fallout fighting with each other. But something was like for two people that never met some of the stuff she was coming at her with. I was like, man, that's that's ridiculous. You don't even know this person in real life. That's crazy. Um, it says uh, Tasha K testified earlier in the week per Law 360 and told the court that she uh, did lie about the hit maker to make money for her business. So basically, some of the stuff she said. She, uh, from what they saying that some of the stuff she said, she, uh, admitted that, hey, you know, admitted to lying, you know, but she was trying to get a paper up and, you know, using her name and the titles and using her name to get, uh, to get views and stuff like that. Which, like I say, at that point, if she would have just stopped whenever the lady said, hey, listen, and got in contact with her, cool, it was like, Yo, the gig's up. Let me step off. But you don't double down, cuss it out, and stop wilding out, man. That's I knew that was going to go bad. Let's see. And it says, taken to the witness stand in Atlanta, Georgia. Yo, ATL, stand up. <laughs> taken to the witness stand in Atlanta, Georgia. The Bodak Yellow rapper told her legal team how the rumor spread by Tasha K impacted her mental health. I felt extremely suicidal. Dang. So, you know, she's going to need to be compensated for her uh, her mental health. I'm pretty sure she's going to have to go and see, um, you know, go and see psychiatrists and, you know what I'm saying, and have to work on her mental health and stuff. Good. That costs money. The trial costs money. You know, it's going to be a, ooh, it's going to be a pretty big lawsuit, man. That's, man, that's crazy. The WAP rapper insisted that she had never experienced uh, suicidal thoughts before previous experiences with poverty poverty and homelessness and physical abuse so basically she's saying um, through all the stuff she been through which was real rough she still wasn't uh, messed up as far as thinking of suicidal thoughts but this right here brought it on because the woman just wouldn't stop and just kept making video after video while she keep telling her hey could you just please leave me alone so yeah that's crazy. And 
When her lawyer asked what she thought about the blogger after seeing the rumors, she said, I feel only a demon could do that ish. And then that was before apologizing for her language. So it ain't like she was just in the courtroom cussing, you know, just she got kind of emotional and that one slipped out. And yeah, like I say, it's going down in the ATL, <laughs> Atlanta, Georgia, man, in Atlanta. Doing the court thing, man. Wow. So, yeah. So basically, if somebody contact you and be like, hey, man, listen, that video you did about me, as soon as they say that part, you should be like, oh, whoa, wait, hold on, okay, my bad, yeah, let me, let me take that down there, man. I know you felt a certain way, and, you know, you nip it in the bud right then and there, man. Don't start arguing with the person and doubling down and messing with their personal life. So, uh I guess that'll be a lesson for everybody. Okay. So uh, that's that's enough on that. Let's talk about the um tsunami. Now that last tsunami it had over in um Tanaka. I think I'm saying the, the name of the place right, but basically the last tsunami. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> uh, what's the name of this place? Tanaka? Yeah, so anyway, um, man, like I say, we know it's got to be the global warming, man, because they've been having tsunamis, like, back to back like this, and it didn't used to be like that. It used to be like, you know, it so many years would pass before the next tsunami, you know what I'm saying? It could happen, but it was, a, it was rare that it would happen. Now that it's happening back to back, it's crazy. And... And it was, uh, one thing about the, the underwater weapons that they got now, where they, um, got these new underwater drones that can go underwater and, uh, do what drones do. And, I don't know, that's kind of like a conspiracy theory on that. Like, somebody was like, well, maybe they was testing one of those underwater drones. Something went wrong. Bow. Next thing you know, it's a tsunami. But, you know, I'm not. Not into that conspiracy because, yeah, I, I think the government's way smarter than that, you know. And we've been having underwater drones and stuff like that, man. It's just like, yeah, I don't see that something like that happening by accident. Because if that's the case, then how do we explain all the other weird weather and being warm when it's supposed to be cold, etc.? You know, come on, man. It's that global warming, man. We keep uh, we keep trying to ignore it, but that global warming is the elephant in the room, man. Yeah. All right. So now I'm gonna get to the next subject. Oh, but uh, more on tsunami, man. I got like a video that uh, deals all with uh, tsunamis, and I'm talking about it goes all. I get deep into the whole science of it and how the tsunamis are started and I mean all that type of if you want want it all broke down just uh you have to go to one of my earlier videos the one where I'm I'm going just deep into tsunamis basically and they can pull that up on my timeline but um yeah so I ain't gonna go reiterate on that and go into all that but you know what I'm saying it's there if you want to if you was wanting to get more into the whole scientific stuff about tsunamis Anyway, so now to the next subject, Antonio Brown, man. Uh, I know that happened like, you know, that's not new in the news feed, and that's happened a while back, but I have to say that that wasn't um, like a phenomenal thing like you would think because they said that uh, they had a lot of people quitting their jobs in 2021, so... You know, and it was kind of like up down where you have a lot of people uh, step out the job market and then you have a upsurge where people start getting back into the job market and then you have another one where people back out. Of, you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of back and forth with it. A lot of people was pulling the Antonio Brown, man. Let's keep it real. <laughs> a lot of people was pulling off our shirts like, man, damn all this, man. You can have this uniform. What's up with it? <laughs> you know? Doing cotwheels and junk on your way out. 
doing jumping jacks, cotwheels, cussing people out. Yeah, you blank, you blank, what the? <laughs> yeah. But I think that the update on that is, yeah, I mean, they had people saying, you know, caping for them saying, okay, well, the uh, ankle injury and this and that, and, you know, he could come back and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, just like probably a lot of people thinking that's in the NFL, like, yo, how many shots do you get, though, man? Like, if they give, bro, another shot, man, it's like, uh, how many you get, though? Or do you supposed to get, get a different shot every week? I don't get it. I mean, mm, for those who said, yeah, everything's going to turn out right for him, the only thing I can say, man, bro, got a... You know, he raps, he's doing his music. He might he might need to focus on that. He might need to turn that part into a career, man, because as far as his NFL stuff going, man, it, it don't look good, bro. I mean, after that one, as soon as he did it, and there was all this hype about him getting off the field, and then he doubled back the next day, oh, but my ankle, man, and this and that, and then people pointed out, they're like, yeah, bro, but you doing jumping jacks and cartwheels and bouncing around on your way out the field how hurt was you actually you know what i'm saying and not only that this thing was like this wasn't the first time he ever acted out like if that like if he was like the model citizen to the league and he wasn't he wasn't messing up at all and he was doing everything right and you never hardly see him mess up okay that's one thing you would get one off you know what i'm saying he could do some, some wild stuff, and hey, it's cool, you know what I'm saying? They'd be like, yo, the man ain't never been in trouble before, this and that, blah, blah, blah. But when you're getting in trouble every week, there's something going on with your name every single week. Uh, and then everybody in the league starts saying, yeah, but that guy's too much of a problem. I think he's more of a headache than what it's worth. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I, for one, man, like a couple of his other incidents that he got into. Uh, one with the video with his uh, baby mama and she at the house and the cops is over there and he's like, you know, you know, yelling at the cops and all this other stuff. Back then, you know, I was, I was caping for him. You know what I'm saying? But now, 50 incidents later, <laughs> I'm like, yo, bro, how many chances, how many different incidents? It's like, uh, come on, man, bro, I can't, no, I just can't. I'm sorry. Still some dudes out there got the cape on for them, trying to cape for this dude. It's, it's over, bro. It's just, uh, come on, man, just give it up already. Go ahead and relax. But as far as the thing about he should, uh, you know, get on to the, mental health thing and you know what I'm saying just work on the self you know what I'm saying I think that's real like I like I say when I say he should he should focus on his rap career man I'm not kidding I'm, I'm serious about that think about it man he already got a following then he could take his fame from the NFL and take that straight into the the hip-hop scene and yo and uh really go hard at it and really i mean really focus all the way into it and make a real good career out of it man he can get his bag back up off of that and anytime you got um uh, you know a uh, big time a big time uh player in the professional side you know you have to really invest your money and do the right moves and you know what i'm saying it's, it's a lot of people that went pro and was doing their thing and didn't have a game plan as far as how to properly retire. I mean, that's so that's not a joke right there, man. You got to be always thinking about the future and putting your ducks in a row. And I think, you know what I'm saying, since he got a love for the rap game, he got he got a real good chance at that, bro. He can, he can really do something there. And like I said, if I was him, I'd go ahead and, Start focusing on that. We already know how it's going to go with the NFL thing, man. It's just, uh, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's like how a lot of them when it, when it, when you basically, 
you know, basically out the league, but not officially out the league. It's, it's one of those deals, you know what I'm saying, basically. All right, so, now, Martin Luther King Day, man. Did you have to work? <laughs> what did you do, man? Did you, the folks had you out there still on the grind or what? <laughs> yeah, man. So, happy Martin Luther King Day to everybody, you know what I'm saying? And... Hopefully you didn't have to work and you could just chill out and drink a few brews, watch a, watch all my YouTube videos and just chill, you know? <laughs> all right. Now, man, yesterday, on uh, yesterday's video, I did, uh, the eye candy of the week at the end of the video and the young lady's banner was supposed to be on there and on the, for some reason, on the picture with a banner that part got cut off so yeah that's why um yesterday you didn't see the info for that one but the lady's name is lexi ellis 31 on instagram and i featured her before and i had all her info on another video and stuff like that so i mean if you wanna if you wanna look her up it's uh lexi ellis spelled l-e-x-i Ellis E L L I S thirty one on Instagram. So um you get a chance to visit her page that gives her more views and more clicks. That's good for her, you know what I'm saying? And it's good for you. What? Now uh like I say, you know, I'm sorry that uh banner didn't pop up. That wasn't intentional. I was like, yo, I didn't notice that till I already had posted video and I was you know, I was Relooking looking at everything, you know, you look at, at over your work, make sure, hey, I ain't mess up on nothing, and, you know, and just uh, kind of cr critique yourself or whatnot, and at the end, I was like, whoa, where's that info, you know what I'm saying, so, yeah, that's my bad, I thought it was up there, I mean, I had did the thing, but on the screen, it had cut that part off for whatever damn reason, but yeah, so, uh, yesterday's I can of the week was uh, Lexi Ellis. Lexi Ellis 31 on Instagram. You don't have that problem with um, today's eye candy because uh, I made doubly sure, man. I'm like, yo, I'm going to have <laughs> I'm gonna put a info all over the place. Like, because you know what I'm saying? That's what the thing's about. You're trying to give an artist shine because, I mean, even just uh, just a little more extra views, a little more clicks end up being you never know who will be the next person to see it. And then it might be a big time person they go to post it. So, you know, I try to give people the shine, man. You know, like what other people give me shine. So, you know, that's what's up with it. That's how it's supposed to work. All right. Now, man, do you take uh, the one a day vitamins? Because actually with uh, the, you know, with the thing out that, we can't talk about that <laughs> we're just weird oh man you got to say it like that with the but you know what i'm talking about it's a thing that you can't talk about or yeah yeah it hits your channel but anyway with that out man you know you have a lot of doctors talking about the the vitamins and stuff like that man and i, I think that's um that's a good thing because like a one a day vitamin i said it before i, I should be taking those daily because it is called a one a day vitamin not once a week or every <laughs> every two or three days when you think about it but yeah it, it made me kind of focus more on that man i started taking my one a day vitamin again i'm like man come on man i better i better do what the instructions say one a day <laughs> but yeah man um i think i think that's helpful and a lot of doctors saying that so i just wanted to put that out there man yeah so for all my truck drivers, uh, as far as your permits, we all know it's the beginning of the year and those uh, permits are coming due. So make sure you um putting your stickers on the side of your truck. You got to have that new 22 uh, sticker on the side of the truck. So, you know, for all my, um, all my peeps in the truck world, go ahead and make sure you're doing your due diligence, man. You don't want to get pulled over. I stopped at the DOT scale, so, yeah, man, just a reminder. Now, man, I got to talk about some of these cats at these truck stops, man. 
it's, it's getting ridiculous, bro. I think at these trucking schools, man, they really phoning it in on the damn, uh, on the backing, man. You'll be so surprised as the guys that's coming out right now, I can't back for nothing, man. Like, they used to, I think they used to do a better, a better job at those trucking schools and emphasizing on the backing, man. But it's getting ridiculous out here, man. If you at a truck stop, man, you gotta be really watching yourself, man. And I done, I done got to the part now where I, you know, I try to park out a customer, uh, you know, Walmart, uh, Target or somewhere, man. I, I try to try my best to, if I'm at a truck stop, it's not for overnight. Cause man, you seeing people hitting people trucks left and right. Dudes came back for nothing. Man, I be getting out trying to help a guy. Hey man, no, turn your wheel to the left. What you doing? Hey, <laughs> you know, like, it's, it's crazy. Yo, know, it's like, man. Yeah. But long story short, man, I'm getting to, man, the other night, I got a damn scratch on my damn truck. And the dude didn't do real bad damage to my truck or nothing. He just tapped it. But I was in the back laid down. I'm asleep. I feel my truck move a little bit. And, you know, you have sleep. You think, oh, it's the wind or whatever. Like, the wind blow hard. Sometimes it shake the truck or whatever. So I, I, I ain't thinking too much of it. But my house draws and you have sleep. So I get up, I open the curtain. And I see a, a damn trailer next to the damn truck. I'm like, oh, what the hell? I go to grab my pants, jump up, hit the air horn. This fool punched, punched his damn, uh, punched that damn fuel pedal and got out of there, bro. He was running for his freaking life, which is BS, man. You, you don't supposed to do no hit and run, hit somebody's truck. And I, I man, and I heard, uh, people before, like, one guy told me, oh, yeah, well, I was just practicing. You know, I get out, and I'm like, hey, man, you getting too close, man. What you doing? Oh, yeah, I was just practicing. Bruh, go to an empty spot where it's just, like, Two or three empty spots next to each other. And you can practice all day and night. Why would you go beside the actual truck that somebody's in talking about you practicing and mess around and hit their truck? Man, it's ridiculous out here, man. But, you know what I'm saying? That goes back to what I was saying earlier about that whole thing with the, um, you know, with, with a lot of people pulling the Antonio Brown. <laughs> like, yo, I'm out of here, man. I'm sick of this. So, yeah, a lot of people, even in the trucking industry, that's out. I'm like, yo, you got there's a gang of new cats coming in that don't know nothing. Man, it be like that sometimes, man. Only thing I say, man, use common sense. Just like me, when I started, when I first started out, man, I wouldn't get all close to nobody talking about I'm practicing with their damn truck. That It makes no sense. All them damn empty spots, that's where I go practice. You know what I'm saying? Practice means just like that. You can mess up. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, I would think that makes common sense, but mm, I don't know, man. Bruh. Yeah, yo, yeah, I ain't going to keep ranting and raving about that. That's just part of my personal day, bro. But well, anyway, man. Yeah. Anyway, like I say, we're going to leave this on a positive note. We're going to get into the eye candy of the week. It's the... Featured artist is a reggae artist, Honey Malone. And I know he's thinking, hey, man, you've been doing a lot of reggae artists lately, man. Well, I listen to a lot of reggae music, man. I listen to reggae, and I listen to reggae tone and rap. That's probably my three basic genres I listen to every day. Every now and then, you know what I'm saying, depending on my mood, I might break out some country, some rock, or something like that. But on the average day, it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be... The three R's, reggae, reggae, tone, and rap, you know, so, that's, uh, but, uh, I think the next artist I'm going to feature is going to be, um, from the reggae tone genre, so, yeah, be on the lookout for that, especially for cats that think, hey, man, you, you real heavy, uh, like, you, you ain't giving nobody up shine if they ain't doing a uh, reggae now, nah, man, uh, I'm just across the board with it, just, uh, happened to be the last, uh, that's what I've been listening to that I was like, oh, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, hey, you know how it is. All right. So, without further ado, that's what we're going to do, bro. We're about to get into the eye candy of the week. Yeah, so I know that's been a lot of info and 
right about now at this time i'm just gonna do a, the segment that we call i candy of the week go ahead and leave everything on the positive note and give somebody they shine um this artist this musical artist is honey is honey milan and they got all her information they got a banner there with her instagram and her different uh different sites and stuff like that so you can check out and go to her different pages and different sites and uh you know check her out she's a real good uh reggae artist um the number one of her top songs is chopper girl and it's featuring her boyfriend still a bean and that 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 video has 1.2 million views on youtube and i was checking it out i was like dang man that's man that's the numbers bro you know what I'm saying? she's doing big man she's doing big numbers right now man and really happy for her. real real proud of her because she's doing real good right now let's see um uh, yeah and i was gonna say when you're hearing the interviews, man, I heard her in different interviews, you know, checking her out, doing my research before I, um, you know, uh, speak on the name. You know, you want to research the person and uh, uh, see what they got going on. And I know that sometimes she talk with uh, the regular American accent. And, you know, most of the time you hear it be a Jamaican accent. But in one of the interviews, she told the interviewer that she was born here in the States, uh, born in Oklahoma, and she was raised in Jamaica. So I'm like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool, man. I didn't know that. But, um, yeah, but she, uh, and she's lived all over the state, lived in Miami, lived in California, and all over. So, um, so you say, like one state, you know, that couldn't really say because she'd be all over the state. But uh yeah, but she was raised in Jamaica, so you know what I'm saying? That's her main her main place, her main spot. And she's a real good artist, man. Like I say, uh, when you get a chance, check out her uh music video she got for Chopper Girl. And like I say, that video already got one point two million views, so that video's doing real good right now. Doing numbers. Yeah, man. And that's the I Candy of the Week. Honey Milan. And like I say, I got all the contact info listed. So you can check it out. Or you just punch in Honey Milan. That's spelled H-O-N-E-Y. And M-I-L-A-N. Honey Milan. Check her out. All right, and that's the eye candy of the 